Hello everyone. In this video, we'll explore how to use Tenderly Debugger and Simulator to troubleshoot a failed transaction. These tools will be essential in helping us understand why a transaction with incorrect inputs has failed, find the correct ones, and validate them. Let's get started. We will be debugging a failed transaction sent to the Uniswap v2 router. If you want to follow along with this example, we'll leave a link to the transaction in the description. The error message suggests a problem with the amount of available output tokens. Looking at the stack trace, we can see that the execution was reverted at this require statement. Let's load the transaction into Tenderly Debugger to inspect the error. The swap function got reverted because the amount of the output token was less than the value of amount out min, which is one of the transaction arguments. We can use debugger's evaluate feature to examine the values of these variables at the time of the execution. If we evaluate this statement as a whole, the result will be false, as expected. To fully understand the issue, we need to check the values individually. Let's convert this expression into a solidity tuple by wrapping the expression in brackets and adding a comma instead of greater than or equal sign. This will give us the values of both sides of the comparison. The first element of the tuple is the currently available amount of the output token. Let's assume that setting the amount out min argument to this value will result in a successful transaction. To test our assumption, we can do a simulation. So let's copy the value and load the failed transaction into simulator by clicking the resimulate button. Notice that the function, arguments, and other fields are automatically pre-populated from the failed transaction. Let's paste here the value we copied earlier from debugger as the second argument. Click on simulate transaction and voila, it's a success. Once the simulation is finished, Tenderly will give you detailed information about the simulation, such as emitted events, state changes, and gas usage. So how does all this help you be more efficient and improve your workflows? After identifying the failure condition with debugger and validating our findings with simulator, we were able to obtain the correct argument. In fact, we can copy this raw input data and send it to the actual network with confidence that the transaction will succeed. Better yet, we could have avoided the failure in the first place if we had done the very same simulation before sending the transaction on chain and wasting money on gas. If you want to explore other ways to use Simulator for debugging transactions, you can check out the documentation linked in the description. And if you have any questions, want to share feedback, or need help getting started, you can contact us at support at Tenderly Co. Thanks for watching.